controlling the hormones makes the caloric restriction so much easier. Why was it that fasting, which is an extreme form of caloric restriction, why did that work right. and other forms of caloric restriction didn't work? So you eat 100 calories of pure carbs and 100 calories of pure protein, they're going to be completely different in our body. You're thinking about this. You have this extravagant dinner that you're going to get to at the end of the night. What do you do? You go work out really hard in the morning and you don't eat all day so that you can get to that dinner and eat tons and tons and tons of food, right? So if you try to lose weight by doing that, you can't control your hunger. Welcome, welcome everybody to the Lasting Weight Loss Podcast with Dr. Jones. And I'm excited for our guest today. Uh, Shannon has been uh, a good friend of mine for about a, about a year now, two year, two years. Yeah. Um, and registered dietitian, right? Correct. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. So tell, tell me a little bit about, cause I know you're really big, um, in, in the weight loss space right now, metabolic health. I, I know that you're, um, an advocate for the Unicity product. So we'll get into all that, but why don't you start by just kind of telling us a little bit about your background, um, and just how you ended up, uh, down this, 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 as I know, you're very passionate with what you do down this path of helping people with, with weight loss and overall health. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, my path actually started rather strange, believe it or not. I was going to go to vet school to be an equine orthopedic surgeon. Got a full four-year degree. Uh, I rodeoed professionally. I don't think that you know that. I didn't know that. Um, but cool. yeah, I, I rodeoed professionally. No one would ever guess that. <laughs> That's so a very if, unique. If we're ever in a trivia contest, now you know. Yeah. Um, and decided, you know, as much as I love that, uh, I can't do it as a business because I'll go broke. I love animals that much. So my second passion, I've always been into health and nutrition and fitness. Um, I just stayed at the University of Georgia, got a second bachelor's degree and uh, did my internship coming, like going into my internship. Um, I was dating somebody that was a type one diabetic. So I've always been very, very interested in the metabolic space and endocrinology and diabetes. And I did a rotation in dialysis and that sort of melted my heart. So that took me down. Uh, over 12 years in dialysis as a clinical dietitian. I've worked in organ transplant for uh, several years. I did a small stint, very small, in bariatrics. And um, that's, a, that's a different topic uh, of discussion uh, yeah. that was not, was not my favorite thing ever. Um, and then the last couple of years, I've been in the pharmaceutical industry in nephrology. So I promote a product that my dialysis patients must have. But my whole passion towards metabolic health and weight loss um, began about 2018 when I uh, couldn't get pregnant. So I wanted to have a baby and couldn't do it and did the whole IVF thing. And uh, I didn't know that either. during that whole, whole process, um, it was rather enlightening. Being a, a dietitian that exercises every day, eats right, does everything that we're taught to do. Right. But yet nothing's wrong with my body and I can't get pregnant. So I was like, uh, the, the pro reproductive endocrinologists were not helping at all. Not one time during that whole stint of pumping my body up with all of those drugs did anyone ever say, oh, you may not want to drink alcohol. Of course, I knew these things because I'm an educated healthcare person, but most people don't. Um, never talked about food, never talked about fat, never talked about uh, cholesterol, never talked about protein, nothing. And so I went down the rabbit hole and basically got into intermittent fasting, keto, low carb, completely changed my metabolic health. And I, I say my eyes have been opened. I call myself a rogue dietitian because everything, Dean, Dean, you want me to call you Dean or Dr. Jones or you don't care, Dr. Yeah. Jones, everything that I learned is ass backwards, everything. And I just, my jaw drops. I even got certified as an adult weight man in adult weight management. I went to this, do this huge big course a week long. Um, and it was always about, <laughs> you're going to love this calories in versus calories oh, yeah. out. 
Let's eat less, let's move more. And obesity is a disease, and it is people that lack willpower and discipline um, to the point that it's disgusting. And I, I don't, I know for a fact that that's not true. Um, I see it myself, and I've seen it with thousands of people that I've been able to help by by doing the complete opposite of everything that I was taught. And it's the name of the game, and I know you and I will agree on this, is control, controlling hormones. If you control hormones, mainly, I mean, you've got all the incretin hormones and that, but but insulin is the driver. It, it's, it's the motor that controls your satiety levels, your hunger levels, whether you burn fat or store fat. And if you can teach people how to eat to control that, then you can control your body. I mean, I I know now I can I can have somebody gain weight like that and lose weight like that. And it's and it's not it doesn't have to to do with them restricting or starving. Like everybody that I work with will tell you I I I'm flabbergasted. That's what they say like I didn't know it was this easy. I didn't know that I could reverse my diabetes. I didn't know that my high blood pressure was not a salt problem. I didn't know that my cholesterol, they say cholesterol, we can talk about that another day too, that that eating fat didn't cause me to have high cholesterol. And um, so it just makes me more passionate and more passionate every single person that I help because they are forever grateful and... Sometimes I want to say shame on the the healthcare industry for not helping people. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, a lot, a lot to un- unravel there for sure. And thank you for sharing that. And and I can see the the, the path that you've been down has been a path of discovery, right? And mm-hmm. and with discovery fuels that intrinsic motivation that you have to to do what you think is right and help people despite of what you know, the group consensus is, and, and, you know, as well as you do, as, as I'm fighting that same, you know, that, that same. Yeah. Um, so I definitely want to talk to you about something that is going to be a little bit uh, challenging for you. Um, and uh, about, you know, and I'll, I'll allude to it right now uh, because, you know, I believe, and, and, and operate off of the hormonal basis too, as well. But how can we, how can we describe what we see in terms of our results? Yet there's the highest level of uh, human randomized control studies that very clearly demonstrate. And I'll, I'll say this for later, maybe give you time to think about that a little bit, but uh, the highest level of research that we have, because I've sat down and I've read it all because uh, mm-hmm. I, you know how I like to really get into this and, and try to make sense of it all. But the, 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 the data is very clear. The highest uh, human randomized control studies show without a doubt, right, when calories are equated for, it didn't matter whether they fasted. It didn't matter whether they were on a low-carb diet. They lost the same amount of fat, which really is mm-hmm. mind-blowing, right? Because that completely contradicts the entire hormonal basis. And so it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd love to hear your opinions if you have any, and, and I'll share my opinions on that later, but let's take a step back. What is the difference between a dietitian and a nutritionist? I, I wanted to ask that. Are they the same thing? Like, what is the difference? I don't even know. Well, I mean, it's, it, so a dietitian, a registered dietitian uh, is a four year bachelor degree okay. in dietetics. Okay, then it's a year long supervised internship that you have to apply for, get accepted to, and then you have to pass boards. And so I have to pass an exam. I have to continue, keep up with my continuing education. Um, they have added where you can be a um, registered dietitian nutritionist. You can include the RDN at, at the, the latter part of your name. I never did. Some states are licensed, some aren't. So I'm an RDLD. Georgia does require licensure. Um, and uh, so a lot of people call themselves nutritionists. But unless they are a registered dietitian, it's truly illegal to give out nutrition advice as far as like, you know, medical nutrition therapy. 
Um, it's kind of like somebody you see at the gym that calls themselves a trainer versus somebody who's gone through, you know, they've got a, a exercise science background. Um, they're certified by ACE or AFA, something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, it, 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 it upsets me. It, it truly upsets me because I spent five years studying. Now, with the caveat, I'm going to say, just because... I went there and studied it doesn't mean that I know more than somebody else. Because if you heard me say in the beginning, everything that I do now is not what they taught me, right? So I learn, and just like you do, I learn from people much smarter than me. I read books. I listen to podcasts. I watch YouTube videos. I I go to these conferences and and do um, online you know, clinics and things like that. I am always learning. So, you know, new science evolves. We're always learning. And if we stay conformed to one thing, then shame on us because, you know, what we learn today is not going to be probably the same as what we talk about in seven years. It, it, it's just the, the way things evolve. And so I am, I am all about, humbling myself and saying, you know what, what we talked about seven years ago, we're not going to talk about that anymore. We're going to do things differently. And I am, look, I have apologized publicly to any person that I have ever worked with in the fact that, look, what I told you all those years ago was wrong. And I am so sorry. Uh, eating every two to three hours, eating six meals a day is not the best thing for us. But what we don't know, we don't know. But I do know now, and if I don't tell you right now, shame on me. And so that's, you know, we're, you've, you've got to stay on top of it. And just like you said, reading the science, reading the data, but it's also about real life. Like we work with a lot of clients every, whether you want to clients, patients every day. And to me, that's so significant. Um, because that's true real life data. Plus myself, everything I talk about, I, I, I experiment on myself, right? You do too, I know. Oh, yeah. Quick minute here. I wanted to tell you guys about the free resources that I have. There's a link in the show notes is going to give you a way to join the free Facebook community where we'll do weekly live coaching all about the weight loss medications on them, without them, whatever it is, we're going to help you hit your goals. And there's a free PDF too as well, which breaks down the step-by-step -step so that you know exactly what to do and when to do it. And we'll see you back in the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, for, for me, it, you know, I, I struggled to maintain my weight loss. And, and this was 20 years ago. And, you know, it wasn't until I adopted a heavy uh, approach towards fasting that yeah. and prolonged fasting. That's how I created the protocol that we do with patients. The flow protocol was you know, just my, my self journey of, of realizing, you know, and why was it that fasting, which is an extreme form of caloric restriction? Why did that work right. when other forms of caloric restriction didn't work? And, you know, if we have time, we can get into that or save that for another podcast, but it certainly was a huge difference for me. And, and then working with patients over the past decade, uh, it's, it's been confirmed. It's been confirmed clinically because we did a ton of blood chemistry analysis, stool analysis, and just, just everything, you know, almost everything improved. Uh, even outside of weight loss, right? So, but but you can argue. Uh, I always try to be critical of myself so that I can mm -hmm. I can learn and grow. You can argue those are all results from the weight loss. How can you tell them independently? That's that's very true. And I'm I'm not even going to have that argument. All what the argument I want to have is what's easier to obtain: weight loss from continuous calorie restriction or weight loss from fasting based calorie restriction. Right. You know, and that ties into my current opinion and consensus, which I definitely want to save. Um, we'll probably end on that note because that'll be the bigger topic for today. But, um, you know, the discussion of why yeah. does the research show such clear, clear opinions regarding calories and not hormones, but yet I'm with you. I'm with you. If I want to get the best results of my patients, I focus on optimizing the hormones, you know? Well, I think that you'll like, I think you'll like my, my thoughts on that. I think you'll appreciate my thoughts on that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to that here. Um, okay. So before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about, so then what are you doing currently right now? Like, what is it that you're doing? You're practicing? Uh, how are you helping people right now with weight loss and health? 
So right now, um, you know, I wear my pharmaceutical hat during the day. I take it off um, I have in, in the evenings and I have my own metabolic health company where I focus on a three-step protocol that I use to help people reverse insulin resistance. We talk about insulin resistance being at the root core of most chronic disease today, whether you're talking about type 2 diabetes, high triglycerides, fatty liver, gout, erectile dysfunction, PCOS, hypertension, um, uh, chronic kidney disease, even skin tags. All of these things stem from one, one common source, which is insulin resistance. So if we can figure out how to fix that problem versus band-aiding it like conventional medicine, then then people get tremendous results. And the weight loss, which is really, I mean, if we're just honest, that's really what drives people. They can be diabetic and and it's really, if they were like a thin diabetic, I don't think it would bother them as much as being an obese diabetic. But when somebody becomes type 2 diabetic, you see the progression. It starts with oral meds, more oral meds and insulin. And then you see their weight do this, right? Once they're put on insulin and, and they will tell you I'm exercising or I'm eating less than I used to. But that's back to that insulin hormone. The more you inject, the more you store fat. I mean, you can look at insulin injection sites. You can look at somebody's injection site in their fat cells versus another biopsy of fat on their body where they don't inject insulin and those fat cells are much larger, yep. much larger. Insulin is a nutrient sensing, it stops catabolism, it halts it and it stores. That's what it does. That's why we're alive. Look at somebody who's type one, newly diagnosed type one, their skin and bones and they can eat 10,000 calories. Yeah. So but what I do is I get on right now. Most of my work is through social media. So I teach people about insulin resistance. I have a three-step protocol that I feel like I have confidently mastered. Nice. Um, and if people follow it consistently, they get the results that they've strived to get and been unable to get. And it's something that's maintainable. It's something that's easy. It's realistic. It allows real life to happen. Um, and it ties in kind of what to, to what you want to talk about later, calories and um, hormones. So do you mind sharing that three step? Is that something? Yeah, you, absolutely. Cool. So I, I teach people to intermittent fast and there are lots of fasts. There's different fasts. You've got your fast, the long term extended fast. You've got dry fast. You have water fast. You have autophagy fast. I just teach my my clients to insulin fast. Those aren't very long. You can do long, oh, by all means. But all I ask really people is you to start with 12 hours. It's like a muscle. If you've never fasted, you got to start somewhere and work your way up to 16 to 18 hours. And really 16 seems to be kind of the sweet spot, they say. So you're going to withhold from eating for 16 hours. Now, during that period of time, I encourage people, please stay hydrated. Drink anything sugar-free, anything diet. Um, the second... Part of my protocol are these supplements that we can talk about. They're not um, something that uh, you have to use, but it's like a game changer. Right. It makes fasting easier. It it helps things happen faster and people grasp it. I mean, people have, you've, you've probably had lots of clients say, I've tried to fast Dr. Jones so many times and I've not been able to do it. These really help you do it. Um, the the Unamate is a yerba mate concentrate. Um, it increases your body's own GLP-1 production, which there's not anybody on this planet that, unless you've been buried under a rock or in a coma, that has not heard of the GLP-1. Yeah, no kidding. Right? I mean, come on. So, so when you got Wagovi, uh, Ozempic, Munjaro, and, and then you've got the, the combos like, uh, Munjaro and Zetbound, and you're given exogenous large doses of this. It's an it's it's a hormone or, or peptide that's made in our gut. Our body releases it when we eat certain foods, but not very much, right? So what this product does is it contains a compound that increases your body's own production by seventy percent. 
So it shuts off the food noise, like like the compounds, like the like the peptides, without any side effect because it's your body's own production. Your body's doing it itself. You get a little bit of the slow gut motility, but not to the extent where you can get the paralysis. Um, but it's all a natural. So the food noise goes away, the appetite goes down, makes fasting super easy. But not to mention there's some other things in here that help with mood and focus and energy. Um, it increases ketone production by 60%. All of this stuff is backed by clinical trials. Um, it's not just hearsay, but I see it every day. That's when we're talking about seeing it with people. Um, it tastes good. There's no interaction with meds. Kids can use it. It's safe. Um, so that, so I drink this in the morning. This is what I was drinking here. And I will eat my first meal of the day sometime later in the afternoon. Right. So that's really step one and two are the intermittent fasting and using these products. Um, the second part of this is a fiber matrix. It's a blend of seven different types of soluble and insoluble fiber with some B vitamins, some proprietary ingredients. You drink it. You chug this one up. Five, uh, we used to say five to ten minutes before eating. We just had a new study done that showed um, if you consume it directly with your meal, you get a 43% reduction in glucose. And that was after eating pancakes and syrup. So the new data on this stuff is even more enlightening. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. This helps with gut health. It helps with, with cholesterol. And it helps you feel satiated quicker and stay satiated. So that's really step one and step two. And then when I teach people to eat, look, there's a, I, I'm not dogmatic on a type of diet. Now, I personally follow a lower carb diet. Do I eat carbs? Yes. Um, but I am, I am particular about how I eat them. Um, and depending on the person that I'm working with is, is to where I'm going to be more aggressive or, or let, or more lenient in the amount of carbs that I recommend that they eat. Right. And so, um, I always tell people, I'm like, focus your meals, start your meals with your fiber and your protein. And you're talking about calorie restriction, right? We'll, we'll touch on that. And then save the carbs for the end. I'm not telling you not to eat carbs, but save them for the end. Why? Number one, through the fasting and through the fiber, you're not going to be able to eat as much food. So you automatically have cal caloric restriction by default. When you eat the way that I teach you, you're keeping hormones down. So weight loss is, like you mentioned, it, you have to have caloric restriction. You have to have a hormone control as well. But controlling the hormones makes the caloric restriction, and we'll talk about it, so much easier. So when you eat by inter intermittent fasting, I always tell my clients, I'm like, look, when you eat this way, you follow these three steps. The intermittent fasting, 12 to 16 to 18 hours, using these supplements that, by the way, come with a 90-day money-back guarantee. So it gives people the freedom to be like, okay, I've tried everything. How is that not different? Try it. You don't have any anything to worry about. If you don't like it, get your money back. But lab work doesn't lie, okay? And then three, if you focus on eat, if you want carbs, eat them last because you're going to blunt that spike in insulin because you've already had your fiber, plus you've had the fiber in the foods, plus you've had protein and fat. And we know that protein and fat slow down glucose spike. And so that's going to keep that insulin lower. So when you eat carbs, you're, you're not getting that spike, which is driving hunger, driving fat storage. So there's no need to count calories. There's no need to log food. Um, it happens by default. So yes, I am not saying it does not matter that you can go eat 10,000 calories. But what I'm saying is if you control insulin, it makes controlling calories way easier. 100%. 100%. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And you know, yeah, we we utilize uh, the the products um, as another tier of, of appetite suppression support. So we, yeah, you know, with, the, with, with obviously, you know, big fans in in my practice, uh, we deal with you know the probably the more progressed obese, um, yeah, uh, autoimmune cases, just more progressed patients, and and we help we help people on the lighter end too as well. And I always tell people all the time, like 
if you can accomplish lasting weight loss with my protocol without the medications, don't touch the medications. I mean, that's the right. line, right? So if you truthfully haven't tried, you really haven't tried like honest and straight with yourself, then, then let, let's try this, the more natural approach. Let's use products like, like this Unicity product. I have a couple other supplements that I like too as well. And, but that's probably one fifth of the patients that come to us. The other four fifths are like, yeah, I mean, this has been an, a 10 to 20 year battle. Yeah. And I've tried everything. I've tried fasting. I've tried it. And, and, you know, they just, they just can't get the ball rolling. And that's where I, I, I do become a fan of these medications, but you're right. You know, they, and it's not just this medication. I mean, you know, all medications have risks, right? So this, yes. this is where for, for me, I'm this like lone wolf in the middle where I probably get, um, uh, uh, some, some, some brows raised and some heads turned on either side, because it's like, are you, are you pro medication or not? Are you holistic or not? Cause I can't tell. Cause when I hear you talk, depending on what part you slipped into my conversation, it could be one or the other because right. truthfully at my core, I would say the base of where I operate and, and, and come from and my energy, uh, is that holistic basis where, you know, all of us, chiros, acupuncturists, naturopaths, I guess dietitians are 10, traditionally more allopathic, but with, you know, the, the more natural ones like yourself, you know, we generally operate off of this, this basis of, of no drugs, no surgeries, right. Or reducing drugs, reducing surgery. Right. So for me, it's always been, my mission statement is for, at least for my clinics, we're reducing prescriptions, preventing surgeries, we're storing optimal health, but I've always been able and willing and excited to embrace science and uh meaning medications as long as you understand the risk and use them with that basis then i th then i'm all for it and uh it's unfortunate though because we know that's not how the majority of these medications are being used Correct. and that's not how the majority right. of medications are being prescribed it's very much a system that's centered around uh let's get to the symptom let's get you to feel better what's your problem great let's here here's your solution right for the symptom with and, and 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 i you know i used to get so upset with practitioners uh when i was younger in my career and then as i matured i realized it's not even the doctor's fault you know they're the, the, no. these primary care physicians are, are are guilt are victims of a system that literally uh, doesn't pay them as much. And so now they have to see patients at a, at a much higher yeah. volume just to make ends meet that they don't, they don't have time. There's no incentive. There's no, there, there, well, there's look no. at the patient. The patients have been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like trained to leave a doctor's visit with medicine. So if they don't leave with something, then, then the doctor didn't do their job. So look, I mean, it is, it's a vicious cycle and I am definitely somebody that says there is a time and place for meds, but I am also one to say, why do we always start with meds? Why don't we start with trying to fix your food, trying to fix what and how you eat, then save the meds when you have failed that, right? And there has to be an end there has to be an end to the meds, right? This isn't something that you can just rely on. Use the meds, like you said, as a way to like kickstart, maybe like it, like this, like this is a tool. This is a tool. So though, if you can look at those meds as a tool, knowing that the tools end, right? Um, so use them to come off of them. So I, I, I do agree with you in that sense. Um, and that's where something like this can come in because this can be people's what's next so, to help with that like you do. Right, right. So then with regards to this product, um, is the goal to be on it for life or what, what does that look like from a unicity perspective? Yeah. I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to, yeah. uh, I've been assuming that most of them are preaching lifelong, but I really haven't asked you yet. So I figured out, yeah. you know, talk to me about the, the, the long-term aspect. If you just did the product, you lost your weight, you're healthy now. What is, what, 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 what are they preaching? Yeah. Or is it different? So, so, so for me, for myself, I take the products every single day. I have a familiar hypercholesterolemia issue. It has helped my triglycerides come down. It's helped my cholesterol. Like I'm good. I feel good. I love the way I feel on them. I will be a life longer because of how I feel. Uh, it, it actually saves me money by using them because I don't snack anymore. I used to be a grazer and a snacker. So I have made it 
financially beneficial for me to stay on it, not to mention how I feel. So if I, I, I tell people this, this two, two ways, why do you take, do you, do you stop taking vitamins when you're healthy? Do you stop going to the gym when you've lost weight? No, you, you continue to do those things because they keep you healthy. Right. So I do look at unicity like that. This is something like, like a vitamin or something that a tool to keep you healthy. Um, I've had people that stop it. Like, absolutely. If you've reached your goal and you feel like you can handle your fasting and, and still eating, I still think that you should eat that way. Um, stop it. Absolutely. And they do. But nine times out of 10, within one or two months, they're back on it. They're, they, they're just like, look, I tried and I feel better and I'm able to keep my appetite controlled. I'm able to keep up with fasting significantly easier yeah. with the products than without it. It's like they, they, it takes the thinking out of it. It just sort of makes it, you know, natural and versus having to use willpower and, and force it. So I always tell people, absolutely. I get it. If you want to come off of it, let's get, let's get your diabetes reversed. Let's get your, your weight to a goal weight. And if you've established those behaviors and you can do it, oh my gosh, yes. Um, but for me, I'm a lifelonger. I love the, it's, there's health benefits to it. It's not just a weight loss product. I had, I didn't lose one pound on it, but I'm in a healthy weight, but I had other things happen. My reflux is gone. My inflammation is gone. My energy and focus is better. So there's a lot of good things that come with it besides the side effect of the weight loss. Um, so I choose to stay on it. I encourage people to stay on it, but if they want to come off. I support them with that as well. Yeah, I definitely, and I'm going to segue here because I know we got about 15 minutes. Um, still need to get on it every day myself to try it because if I'm being honest, I, I definitely look at it still probably, you know, and Shannon, we have a great relationship. I can always tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I probably look at it and perceive it more as a, as a fasting tool than anything else, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely guilty of that and, uh, looking forward to, you know, digging into this new literature that you've been sharing with Watch that, that new, that study I just sent you. Yeah, you'll, no, I, I absolutely, you'll, abs you'll look at it differently. I absolutely will. But at least that's encouraging to know, um, you know, that, that it, it's like, you're not saying you have to stay on it, but you're uh -huh. saying that if you can basically afford it, right. If you see the benefit of it. Um, and I think that's a fair, I, I think that's fair. I, you know, what I hear from a lot of people is, you know, 200 bucks a month is just unsustainable for the rest of their life. And so I kind of developed that same sort of like, yeah, I hear you, you know, so let's, so stick with me. I'll, I'll get you off of it. Uh, or I'll get you on a reduced amount. So there's, there's probably that aspect to it too. Like, can we make that box last two months or three months? Now it's significantly cheaper. Now we could talk about maybe being on it for life. So a, a ton we can unravel there and probably should yeah. probably do future episodes on that. I wanted to interrupt the show to tell you guys about the free resources that I have for you to be successful in 2024. The link in the show notes is going to provide you a way to join the free Facebook community. We do weekly live training. It's a great community. We'll answer all your questions with or without the medications. We're going to help you get there. And there's a free PDF which breaks down the steps so that you know exactly what to do, how to do it to be absolutely successful this year for your weight loss goals. Now back to the show. Uh, uh, later for sure. Um, okay, let's get into this because this is juicy. Um, I made an entire hour long YouTube video talking about this, right? Um, and I have a lot of respect. You know who Lane Norton is? I love Lane. I was about to to say that when you were talking about reading the randomized oh, control trial. He randomized control human trial. <laughs> he cracks me up. Always, always my CrossFit coach. We always talk about Lane, and I'm like, Lane's single now. You can you think you can introduce me to Lane? He's divorced. He's really? I think he. I'm pretty sure. Because I I saw him talking about his kids, but I don't know how recent that was. Right. So. Um, yeah, you know, I think, unfortunately, we know a lot of people that are out there preaching the hormonal basis of obesity does, do not actually understand the mechanisms. And so here's, you know, when, when people say calories don't matter, right, this, this kind of segues to this conversation, because I think a lot of them that are saying that literally think that statement in a literal, in a literal sense is true, like calories don't matter, but we know that's false. We have the RCTs, the randomized human randomized control studies and meta-analyses that tell us calories absolutely matter. 
So in a literal sense, that statement couldn't be more wrong. But I'm sitting here going, do you, especially, especially, and this is, we'll, we'll, we'll save that for another time. But when, you know, Dr. Fung, I, I, I see, I see coaches calling out Dr. Fung saying that he's wrong. He doesn't understand science. And I'm like, do you really think the man that wrote the diabetes code, the obesity code, the cancer code, the PCOS code? I have code? so much respect for Dr. Fung. I love his work. You, I, I truly do. A hundred percent. And I'm like, you really think the man doesn't understand the, the law of thermodynamics, he talks about that. Like when he, when sure he, when he, he saying talks, calories yeah. don't matter, he, he he's not realizing that he's talking to somebody that's going to literally interpret that. He's saying at the right. end of the day, they don't matter. So anyways, anyways. So, so yeah. what is your take on that? Why do we have these high level RCTs that say, and they, and they compared head to head, you can go low carb. You don't have to, you can fast. You don't have to caloric deficit is controlled both groups will lose weight. How do you make sense of that with what we're seeing in, in real world life? I mean, I think if you talk, if you, if you, you just mentioned Fung, if you look at Fung, you look at Dr. Ben Bickman, who I so much respect. He's a metabolic and in, in insulin metabolism scientist. He studies fat cells and <laughs> insulin in his lab. I mean, this is all he does. And, um, and, and both of them, um, even Dr. Robert Lustig will tell you to look at that model is, is archaic to, to simplify it into calories in versus calories out, eating a certain number of calories of item a, <clears throat> look at, look at a steak, look at almonds. You got 160 calories worth of almonds. Do you think you absorb 160 of those calories? No. Look at a 700 calorie ribeye. Do you think that equates to 700 calories absorbed? So looking at it from that pure perspective is wrong. Where do you think calories came from? It, they took items of food and put it in this little oven called a bomb calorimeter and watched how quickly it burned, like at what temperature it took to burn this. So to think our body is that simplistic is wrong. Um, Calories do matter in the fact that certain macronutrients elicit certain hormonal responses, right? You've got protein, you've got your PYY, you've got fat that elicits cholecystokinase, you've got carbs that elicit insulin. Those do different things to your metabolism. They do different things to your hunger. They do different things to your fats, whether you store or burn. So you eat 100 calories of pure carbs and 100 calories of pure protein, they're going to be completely different in our body. Now, it's easier to overeat calories in simple carbohydrates because of those hormonal responses in our body. So if you do, I guess what I'm getting at is if you're looking for weight loss, Calories matter, but if you, and Dr. Bickman so gives a, a great example, he goes, if you want to lose, lose weight, you're trying to lose weight, and we look at strictly calories in versus calories out, so what, what you're going to do, you, you're thinking about this, you have this extravagant dinner that you're going to get to at the end of the night, but you know it's the best food you've ever, you're ever going to put your mouth on. What do you do? You go work out really hard in the morning and you don't eat all day so that you can get to that dinner and eat tons and tons and tons of food, right? So if you try to lose weight by doing that, you can't control your hunger, right? So if you can tackle insulin first, insulin drives hunger and use your hormones to get to control them first, it makes reducing calories as the second lever, first pull the hormone lever, use calorie control as the second lever. It makes it easier. If you start with calories and your insulin is high, it, you'll lose weight in the beginning. But what happens? You see people always come back. They binge. They, they can't do it because hunger always wins. Why? It's because you haven't fixed your hormones. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I, I like the, I like, uh, the, the lever analogy, right. And, and, and just focusing on, on the, the hormones first. 
Um, what I've kind of landed on is uh, looking at it from a different perspective. So um, we know, right, like at the final end of the day, yes, calories absolutely matter. That's already proven by the RCTs. Like, so we know that, okay? But human beings don't live in a scientifically controlled experiment, right? That's my biggest argument is yeah. this: these studies were so tightly controlled that that's the problem. We're not studying the right thing because people in the real world don't have a situation in a scenario where they're forced to eat at a deficit. Well, look at the biggest loser. They were eating 800 calories a day and still gaining weight. So if it's only about calories, how can that be? 100%. 100%. How can that be that I can eat more calories and lose weight than somebody else? Right. It. Well, there's, yeah, there's, there's a lot of variabilities, right? And this is where science, we have to take a step back and we do have to look at the higher level research, right? That's, that's why this battle is so, um, is so interesting because from a scientific perspective, it appears unequivocally that the, the calorie wins, right? Like it, it, you, how do you even, and, and, and it, it, this is where I think Dr. Norton comes in and, and he laughs and chuckles. Cause it's like, why are we even having this conversation? We don't have anything close on the hormonal side to even um, begin to say that hormones matter more. Now you can argue that the research hasn't been done, blah, 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 blah. But I won't even make that argument. Where I'm coming from is that RCT is, 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 is what it is. But it's, what it's not is a representation of what people do in the real world because people in the real right. world are not in a, um, uh, a scientifically controlled experiment where they are forced uh, and they, and some of these studies are even in wards. So, so they, these people are watched. This isn't a reported, I, I ate this many calories. No, you were observed. And, and, and so we concluded that you ate that at that deficit, right? Well, in the real world, people don't have that. That's a luxury. If somebody was watching me 24 seven and forcing me and only allowing me to eat yeah. at that great, great. But as you talked about the, the, the hunger, we don't get to choose when we're hungry. We don't get to choose when we're not hungry, okay? Right. And so that's where real world uh, reality sets in. And so for me, and, and I would love to have a conversation with, with, with uh, uh, Lane and, and ask him this opinion because he's so emphatic, but I think he might even be wrong when he uses that as a representation to say, see, it doesn't matter. Go ahead in the real world. Let fat, uh, don't worry about fasting. Don't worry about carb cycling because this data says it doesn't matter. But what I'm arguing is that data does not represent the real world situations where people have to overcome hunger. And then the other part of it is people have to overcome a slower metabolism, right? Because the two right. components, that the, the two aspects that are going to affect whether a person is in a caloric surplus or deficit is how much they're eating or not eating, aka how hungry or not hungry they are, and then how many calories they're burning, aka the majority of that comes from the basal metabolic rate. And both of those things are affected by your hormones. So correct. And it the food, those foods that they eat matter. Whether you're eating 900 calories of pure fat or 900 calories of carbs, that matters. It matters. It, it, the quality of the, the composition of those calories matter i think it almost matters more than the the number of calories yeah well then i i think i think it's it's you can't say whether it matters more or not unless you define what matters means right and so i i'm assuming you, you what yeah. you're referring to is what matters in terms of at the end of the day what's going to have the most positive impact on the person's ability to to, to lose weight and then so yes if that's what we're defining it as um, because we just talked about the influences yeah. that certain macronutrients are going to have on hunger and your basal metabolic. You eat, a, you eat 900 calories of pure, simple carbohydrates. Then at the end of the day, when you're done with your 900 calories, you're going to be hungry as hell versus somebody that ate 900 calories of fat and protein. They're, they're going to be satiated. They're not going to be able to eat more. So then they're going to win because they're not battling hunger. But then you see uh, another hilarious, the dude, I forgot his name, 
who ate uh, sneakers ca- candy. He just straight up ate candy, and he was at a caloric deficit. And they ran, and it was a pretty controlled single, ex- you know, experiment. His blood markers improved, his insulin levels improved, eating all crap. So you know, I look at that and I go, huh, right? Because it's. But if he's in a cal- caloric deficit, if he's in a caloric deficit, you will have those markers improve. So you can't say it improved from it's uh, in a caloric deficit you will your levels will come down because your body is having to burn its own fat but that's the argument they're making is is if i can if i can improve my markers with sneakers bars why are you telling me that fasting and ketogenic diets are the most important thing because i just showed you that i didn't do any of that because what is it about is it about short-term weight loss is about long-term health right right and and you know what but then they'll make that argument that the insulin lowered my health improved. <laughs> yeah, but it's more about it's not just about insulin, right? We know that it's about your vitamins, your minerals, your gut health, um, all. Of and that. I love playing devil's advocate so that we can, yeah. so, so that we can improve our, our our understanding. But yeah, no, I know you got to what? You have a couple of minutes here, and you got to get off. Yeah. Okay. So you know, just really finishing that 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 thought, and it sounds like we're on the same page. Like, you know. It, Yes, calories matter um, at the end of the equation, but in, in, in the real world scenarios, people are having to overcome their hunger. People are, ha- are having to deal with how many calories they're burning. And those two variables are greatly influenced by your hormones. And so what me and you have both observed in real world uh, uh, situations is that you could have somebody count calories and put all that effort, but the amount of effort to optimize hormones just seems to be much less, more easier to adhere to, especially, with these, especially mm-hmm. with these tools, sustainable. And what we're looking at and theorizing at this point, right? Because we don't have RCTs to say this. It appears that the, the, the positive impact on the hormones, which we do know, we do have science to say, we know it's improving insulin. So that must be making it easier to get the person into that caloric deficit. So we're still acknowledging right that the caloric deficits needed, but we're saying, Hey, do you want to do it the neurotic and sort of like hard way? Like through your, like working against your body or do you want to work with your body? (laughs) Like let's work with your body and let's, let's make it easy. But anyways, yeah, this was awesome. This is awesome. I definitely would love to do some more episodes with you. I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Have a good day.